Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party, unlicensed, one-six scale figure unboxing and review video. Now, today, we are going to be taking a look at none other than the deluxe version of the VTS Toys Ghost of Battlefield, aka Jin Sakai from Ghost of Tsushima. Now, that game was a standout for me, one of my new all-time favorite PlayStation exclusives, so I am so glad that a company decided to tackle this particular character, and VTS tends to go all out. So yeah, I'm super excited to get him out here. Now, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind, this guy is third party, it's unlicensed, that means it's an unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This isn't a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art, and I for one was not expecting the box to be this big. Now I'm pretty sure if you get the standard one, it's going to be substantially smaller. You do have the Clan Sakai symbol up front and center, which is a super classy touch, and then what I think are some red maple leaves over the surface. You also have Ghost of Battlefield down below, and then this really classy high gloss pattern that makes its way all the way around the box. You do have some various warnings on the back there. Now I am super excited to get this guy out here. Ever since I played Ghost of Tsushima for the first time, I was all in. I am hoping that VTS get around to making the Clan Sakai armor, the armor that Jin's father was wearing with the big horned helmet, but for now, the ghost armor is still pretty darn awesome. I have to say, I wasn't expecting there to be this much weight here. These pieces are die-cast, so this guy feels very sturdy. Now you do have one foam block up on top, and then another down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of Jin's accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the deluxe diorama display base first, this thing is gorgeous. You all know I love my diorama display bases, so this just speaks to me. It's a rather hefty piece. It is, I believe, cast out of polystone. It's a rocky outcrop with a bunch of golden leaves over the top, and then you have these two sections which are magnetically attached. So technically, if you don't want them there, you can totally remove them. One is a little bit more battle damaged than the other. You also have this wooden fence around the back that's sculpted and painted very nicely, but the coolest part is up on top you have a full Clan Sakai banner, plus it does have a wire running around the edge, so if you wanted to have it billowing off in the wind, you can totally do that, and it's removable. So if you want to have Jin carrying it, you can do that as well. Now you also get this extension piece. It is a nice sturdy material, just like the base itself, and it's painted very well. However, when you go ahead and install it, it makes the base very long. So I don't know if I have the room in my display to use it, but the cool thing is if you do choose to omit it and leave it in the box, the base still looks perfectly complete. You also have a dynamic flight pole with a waist clamp up above. Now, one piece that some people have complained about is the fox. They didn't really love how he turned out. They said he's a little bit too floofy and he looks slightly weird. I actually like him. I find him rather endearing. I like the shaded effect to the fur. He is a little bit more full and floofy, but this potentially is an older fox. You also have these smoked tips to his tail and his feet, plus his little ears up the top, then the white stripe down the front. But you're not really buying this set for the fox, you're more buying it for Jin Sakai anyway, so I wouldn't let the fox be the decider on whether or not to pick up the set. 
you also get the half bow with the burning fang color scheme. I really like the way it looks. The red, the black and the white, the little tassel up the top, and then the actual working elastic string. I wouldn't have minded if they'd included the bigger full bow as well, but the half bow will totally get the job done. Now, you also get a bunch of arrows, three of each to be precise. The smaller ones do have a yellow color scheme, whereas the longer ones are red. They are all made of metal, so they are very sturdy and they should stand the test of time. You do get his three swords that he uses in the ghost armor, and they've chosen the Storm of Clan Sakai color scheme. I really like this. The muted blue, the black with the blue shading in the middle, and then the textured effect to the outside. The white hilt, and then the real metal sword. All three of them are actually made of real metal, and they will store on the body. I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later in the video. You also get two of his throwing knives, or the kunai. They are quite small, and they are a little bit prickly, so do be careful not to spike yourself. I also like the sculpt to the handle. It does look like real rope. He also comes with his flute. This is a very nice touch. I wouldn't be surprised if a few people do actually pose him sitting down on the display base using the flute. He also comes with these two smaller pieces. I'm struggling to remember what they were. This, I think, is a little rock that you can throw to cause a distraction, and this may be a smoke bomb, but I could be misremembering. If you know what they are, do let me know down below. Lastly, you also get his ghost mask with the Executioner's Penance color scheme. You have the gold tip down below, the gold teeth, and then the string so you can actually tie it around his head, plus the inside is red. I really like this mask. I am very tempted to pop this on him and keep it on him permanently. You also get a full array of sculpted and painted hands. The skin texture looks on point, and I'm fairly happy with the selection. What we are going to do now, though, is get the figure himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him, standing straight up and down in the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I love the way this guy looks. When I was sitting down and playing through Ghost of Tsushima for the first time, I was also sitting there thinking, ooh, wouldn't it be great if someone makes a 1-6 scale Jin Sakai? I'm so glad that it was VTS who tackled this character, because they did an awesome job. I mean, you saw how many accessories he comes with, a diorama base, interchangeable outfit options, which we'll discuss in just a second, the proportions are on point, there is some die cast here on the outfit itself, which I was super surprised to see, and it all comes together to make for a stunning 1-6 scale figure. Even if you have someone come in the room and look at your display and see this guy not knowing anything about the game, their eye will be drawn to him just because of how awesome he looks. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second I will be popping on the face mask and the jacket and switching out the cape for the non-tattered version just so we can see what he looks like fully upgraded. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, in the game, this is known as the Ghost Armor, the color scheme is Executioner's Penance, and there are various stages of upgrades that you can perform on the suit. This is the second from last stage, but if you want to go all out, fully upgraded, you can totally do that. I'm so glad that they included the parts and pieces so you can have alternate looks, they didn't have to include them, they could have just given us one version of the ghost armor, but VTS went all out. Now let's talk about the head sculpt. Some people have complained and said the likeness isn't spot on to the actor who they used to portray Jin Sakai in the game. 
I can totally see that. It's not 100%. But this is a video game character, so for me, there is a little bit of leeway. I think this evokes the spirit of Ghost of Tsushima, and I can see Jin Sakai from certain angles. I like the furrowed look to the brow, I like the skin texture, the paint applications, the scratch on his cheek, and the ghost headband. It all looks awesome. Around the back, he does have his bandana. In the promo images, they did show it moving left and right, depending on the direction you want it flowing in. For some reason, mine appears fixed, so I can't get it to move. If yours does, then yeah, that's even better. Now, you do have to install the scarf out of the box. It is a non-trivial thing to do. It is very difficult. You have to tie it and tuck it in, so take your time and get it to sit just right to reveal a little bit of his neck. Now, he does have two kunai up top. They are pegged into the outfit via these very thin little pegs. I am worried that they will potentially break over time if I put too much stress on them, so those are pieces you have to be very careful with. As for the rest of the armor, it looks great. I love the green, brown, and blue color scheme. It all meshes perfectly together. You have some weathering on various sections, including these armor plates where the gold has been chipped away. Also, I'm not sure if you can hear that, these are made of metal. So too are the chains on his forearms, these pieces on the back of his hands, down here on the legs, these are metal as well. There is a ton of real metal armor here. And that is awesome. They didn't need to do that at all, but I'm so glad they went to town on the armor. That means these drape and lay perfectly because of the weight of the metal itself, and they look and feel very convincing. You also have multiple sections where the armor, or the fabric I should say, is in tatters. This is the ghost armor. He's a little bit more sneaky. He's potentially abandoned his honor, so therefore the outfit is in a little bit of a state. You also have wires in various sections because there was a lot of wind mechanics in Ghost of Tsushima, so you can have it billowing off with the guiding wind, and these sections on the front do move very nicely along with it. Underneath, you have some quite baggy fabric pants, so that means you should be able to go crazy with your posing. One thing that I don't love, though, is these pieces around the front. In the game, they are tied off to the side and they kind of drape down. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could untie this and get them to sit just right, but as it stands out of the box, they do look a little bit goofy. You also have the Japanese style sandals, as you can see. There is some texture sculpted in underneath, and the ropes sculpted in on the top. But yes, overall, so far, I am very impressed with Jin Sakai. As for the second fully upgraded look, here we have him fully upgraded. And yeah, this look is awesome. I've also popped on the mask just to show you what that looks like. I am now very tempted to display him full time wearing this mask, where previously I wasn't even sure I was going to have that on the figure. Now, this inner jacket is non-trivial to install. It has to slide under the various ropes and straps. Take your time, have patience, and you will get it done. You also have some dirt and grime around the edges and a wire along the front, so if you want to have it interacting with the guiding wind, you can totally do that. Now, around the back, he has a very similar cape to the other one, except this time it's not tattered along the edges, it's fully complete. You still have the Clan Sakai logo, this is filthy. The logo is also chipped and weathered as the paint has worn away over time. I love the way this looks. You also have a wire running around the edge and around the side as well, so you do have a ton of movement there. 
Now in terms of switching the hands, it's not all that easy to do. You do have to thread the fingers and the thumb through these elastic straps. Once again, take your time. The best way I've found to do it is to slide the hand out, including the wrist peg, and then pull the fingers out of the straps and then do the reverse to install them back in there. But I am curious, do let me know which of the two upgraded looks is your favourite. Now for our quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Jin alongside the Spidey PS4 Advanced Suit. Now these are from two completely different universes, I totally understand, but they're both PlayStation exclusive characters, so you could technically display them together and I think it looks pretty darn awesome. Jin Sakai is slightly taller than Spidey, I'm okay with that. I don't know if in-universe there's a height difference between Spidey and Jin, they're from two completely different games, but I'm sure someone will let me know. Either way, yeah, I'm tempted to have these two on the same shelf. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. I've also taken off all the various swords, and I don't have his jacket on. If you do have them here, they may of course hinder your range of motion. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a separate neck, it does look forward and back, swivel, then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will of course go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. Now due to all of the stuff on the torso, you don't get a ton of crunch, understandably. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, but it does tend to pull the pants up and expose the ankle peg. You do get them going out, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee that will go past 90, and lastly a ball joint down here for the angle. Just wrapping up on the VTS Jin Sakai from Ghosts of Tsushima. Now going into this, I was hoping to receive a shrunk down miniature version of the third scale Prime 1 statue, that's kind of what I was going for. At the end of the video, can I say honestly that that's what I have here? For me? Yeah, totally. This guy has the presence factor. That's something that I was hoping he would have, and he has it in spades. The armor is gorgeous. There is so much to look at here. It's real tactile metal armor plates, the paint applications are impeccable, there are tattered sections on the fabric, there's weathering, then we get to the head sculpt which I know won't be for everyone, but I really like it. I think it evokes the spirit of Jin Sakai from the game. He's got that grizzled, serious samurai look, the paint applications are on point. Then we have the mask that goes over the top, plus the various alternate armor and outfit pieces to create different looks. You get a ton of weapons, and if you go for the deluxe version, a gorgeous diorama display base that in my opinion is an absolute must. The standard base will work perfectly fine, but this one will elevate him to another level entirely. Literally, because it is rather tall, it will make this guy stand out in the display. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind this is third party, it's unlicensed, this guy is an unofficial product. As I said in the intro, I've popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection. And of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.